Thank you all so much. <laughs> thank, thank you all so much. Wow, such an amazing welcome. You all look fabulous. You just look fabulous. Nice. Nice. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy! So, all right. Welcome to the right side with Doug Billings, where we have the most intellectually mature audience in all of podcast land. Sydney, what the hell is the Kraken and where is it? <laughs> Well, I, I think the first time I mentioned the Kraken was when we did the uh, infamous press conference at the RNC. I did not know I was going to be speaking at that press conference. I uh, had been told I was not to say a word until um, suddenly I get there and suddenly I get a message that says, okay, you're talking about Dominion. And that was 10 minutes or less before I walked out there to do it. So. The way I have proceeded for a long time, and especially every day of the representation of General Flynn, and since then, I go to bed at night and I ask God to just make me a vessel to find the truth. And to put me on whatever path I need to be on, to show me what I need to see, to help me understand what I need to see, and to give me the words to say what he wants me to say. So I never plan, I never plan a speech. I, I never do, I haven't in years and years and years. So I just try to speak the truth in love. Sometimes that's difficult to say and sometimes that's difficult for people to hear. But I always strive for the truth. And those words just flew out of my mouth that day. <laughs> I was so angry at the massive widespread fraud we had witnessed and the refusal of everyone, everyone in law enforcement at every level to look at it, take it seriously, do anything about it. I mean, we have witnessed a complete institutional failure of every institution in our government, state, local, federal, that was supposed to protect us, we the people, and the citizens of this country and protect the rule of law, the Republic and the Constitution. They all failed. They knew what was going on. Many of them were part of it from both political parties. And I knew early on, right after the election, that I was going to have to take a different path because the campaign and the Republican Party and all of that were not going to take on what needed to be done. It just wasn't gonna happen. So release the Kraken was just my spur of the moment, fly out of the mouth thing saying, I, I couldn't say we're gonna rain holy hell on these, <laughs> <laughs> or unholy hell. Uh, so anyway, it, it flew out. And then the next thing I know, it's gone viral because apparently uh, the Kraken is a super cyber computer that does all kinds of spy things. And the Kraken is the nickname for one of the big military groups that is part of that. So I don't even know what all the Kraken is, but I just... <laughs> uh, apparently now it's me. <laughs> <laughs> The election was stolen from us, um, and we want it back. 
Um, there are, there, so there are a lot of rumors or a lot of stories. There, when Sydney and I never, this is, this is not scripted. There is no script here between Sydney and I, and there never is when she's on my show. Were you ever going to be a military piece of this in the court representing from the military tribunals, any of the people that are involved in this? Is, that, is there any truth to that whatsoever? And don't speak in code. Just tell the <laughs> truth. Yes. I don't know any code, for starters. And uh, no, that, I don't know where that came from. I, I really don't. It's a widespread rumor. Uh, but no, there are no military tribunals going on. There is nobody that's going to magically solve this problem for us. It's going to take every single good-hearted, law-abiding American to roll up their sleeves and go to work in your precinct, in your school district, in every part of our lives to reclaim this country for the American heritage we are supposed to have as envisioned by God and our founders. Amen. Amen. With regards to, um, to President Trump, uh, who is the president, by the way, um, you know, we heard about the Insurrection Act, we heard, um, you know, we heard a lot of things. I think one of the toughest questions that is out there, the one that people talk about the most with regards to you and, and, and things that you may know, why didn't President Trump do anything to stop this? That, that is one of the hardest questions there is, and I, I really don't know the answer. What I can tell you is that he had the power under Executive Order 1348 that he had signed in 2018 that had been renewed each year since then, including as recently as September of 2020. It gave him all the emergency authority that any president has ever had and it could have been invoked because it was triggered with, by foreign interference in the election. There was already an FBI, CISA, CISA, the Homeland Security Division that's supposed to secure the vote. They had already done and published a notice, an advisory of foreign interference in the election, updated as of election day. So it didn't even require an additional finding by the FBI or CISA or anything else to say there was foreign interference. But in addition to that, there was significant, actually massive evidence of foreign interference in the election in terms of hacking and in terms of uh, package travel or packet travel, the cyber guys call it, that was going between Serbia and Germany and the United States and Hong Kong and uh, all uh, any number of other countries were interfering in our election, and it was real election interference. Mike Lindell has been working on the possibility of evidence showing actual votes being flipped by county. Um, that is still in the process of being verified, but there is a mountain of evidence of actual foreign interference in our election, not the least of which was all our votes being sent to Seidel in uh, Germany and Spain to be counted. He had all the tools he needed. Uh, everybody around him except me, who was only allowed in really for several hours the night of December 18th, I think it was, and that was kind of a, a spur of the moment thing that we put together and, and got over there and, and got in to talk to him for a little bit. Everybody else was saying, no, you can't do anything. From the day after the election, everyone around him in the White House was telling him to just pack it up and go home. Jared and Ivanka, of course, had already gone home by then, I think. Um, his White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, and Eric Hirschman, who essentially worked for Jared, all the lawyers around him were telling him, there's, there's nothing you can do. I vehemently, vehemently disagreed with that. And I guarantee you, if the same thing had happened when the Democrats were in power, they would have used the law available to them and I also 
told them all it's not about Donald Trump. It's about the Republic of the United States of America. We are not a democracy where the mob rules. We are not a country where you can buy the election, at least we're not supposed to be. We are supposed to be the most transparent country in the world. Our government is supposed to be that, and our elections are supposed to be that. That is why a federal statute requires votes, ballots, all voting material to be kept for 22 months after a vote of any kind so that it can be reviewed, it can be audited, it can be inspected so that we the people can have the ultimate confidence in the validity of our elections and that our citizens' one vote counts as one vote. We completely lost that in this election. They took the two worst candidates in the history of the Democratic Party a demented old pervert who can't even tie his shoes. <laughs> and heals up Harris, who couldn't win. <laughs> <have a>, <laughs> who couldn't even win a primary in her own state. And they shoved them up our noses with a fork of fraud so blatant it has been seen around the world. That is how evil, that is how powerful, that is how widespread the problem is. We all knew it was bad, but for it to be as bad as to accomplish what we just witnessed is terrifying. And it is a huge wake-up call for anyone who cares about the United States of America and wants to protect the liberties that we have enjoyed, that we want our grandchildren to have. The very future of this country depends on every one of you getting involved and getting everyone you know involved, whether it's to go to the school board and demand that there be no masks on our children or... holding elected officials accountable at every step. Uh, I mean, people are gonna have to bird dog your city council, bird dog your county commissioners. You'll see what a difference it makes if you get a, together a group of 10 or 15 people and you go sit in every city council meeting and start speaking up and calling bull feathers when you see it. It's gonna make a big difference. It will. Like a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I did that when I fought for General Flynn. <laughs> so yeah, there, you, that was a whole nother, a whole nother story. Yeah. You have a lot of insight into the to the deep state because you witnessed it. You've you've been fighting it. General Flynn obviously does. President Trump. It would seem when we have a president of the United States. Now I love President Trump. I think he was the best president we've ever had. He is currently the, the best president. Imagine what he could have accomplished had he not had his hands tied behind his back and had to deal with the uh, Russia hoax, the obstruction hoax, the apocalypse hoax, the collusion hoax. I've never seen so many hoaxes that they talked about the entire term of his presidency. And if we talk about election fraud now, it's supposed to be shut down. It, that's absolutely absurd. If you go back, I want everybody to watch the documentary Kill Chain. It's an HBO documentary that came out in March 2020 and it's about the voting machines, and it's the Democrats talking about how easy, easily this fraud could be perpetrated with the voting machines. I mean, they did everything but write down for us and stick in our faces what they were going to do to steal this election, and yet we're not supposed to talk about it now. Hogwash. Arizona. What comes to mind when you hear Arizona with regards to the audit? Well, I think it's going to find evidence of four to 500,000 fraudulent votes for Biden. <laughs> Maricopa County was the focus of the biggest fraud in Arizona, and the audit is still proceeding. 
They are finding a number of different things. I don't know how much, well, there really isn't that much that's been released publicly yet, and I don't have any special knowledge, but my understanding is that they are definitely finding things. And it's going to be very important for us to get that evidence and also for other states to take the same steps. There should be enough evidence of fraud in Maricopa for the legislature to be forced to decertify the electors. Right. We also know there are 400,000 ballots in Georgia that they could not establish a lawful chain of custody for. And of course, we have the video in Georgia of Ruby Freeman shoving the same pristine, unfolded ballots through the same machine multiple times. And oh, by the way, there just happened to be a corresponding spike of over 100,000 votes for Biden during that time. But no, no, there's no evidence of any fraud. No, no, no. Yeah, red, absolutely red-handed, yes. Because I mean, all the free world looks to the United States of America. The fraud that we just witnessed not only changed the course of history of the United States, it changed world history. And that's why they did it, because there is a massive group of global political elites that thrive on the power and corruption with which they have infected every country they've touched. About four years ago, I took six months and traveled around the world to places I never wanted to go. And I did it to see what was going on out there. The first thing that shocked me was that China and Cuba had invested in every container port around the world they could find. They are invested in South America, in Africa, in India. They had gone into these small countries, anybody that had access to the sea. They had built a container port and they had built enough infrastructure to get into the country to rape those countries of their natural resources. That is exactly what they have been doing for at least five years, probably much longer than that. And I had no idea that that was going on. I just, I just really didn't, certainly not to the magnitude that it is, but it was all around the world. I went to 120 different ports and they had a role absolutely everywhere. I mean, if it weren't for the United States of America and our liberty and freedom, Australia would have already been taken over by the Chinese. I happened to go through the Panama Canal the same day that the first Panamax freighter went through the new Panama Canal channel. That Panamax freighter is built by China and it is beyond massive. You can't even imagine how big that thing is and how many containers it carries. They have planned for the long term. They do intend to dominate the world. They are willing to do anything to do it, as we saw from the Chinese virus. I'm sure they are planning more of that. The fact that the United States invests a single dime through anyone in the lab at Wuhan, I find beyond appalling and actually criminal. Yeah. Our government has completely forgotten that it is supposed to work for us. We have an entrenched political class that is busy lining its own pockets with the wealth that can buy, beg, borrow, steal, whatever, from people that are in the system that are part of the problem. We have to clean it all out some way and take it back for the people of the United States. All right, Sydney, let's, uh, let's, give, let's give the audience and, and us a chance to dream a little bit together. What, let's assume that Arizona flips and that that creates a domino effect in the battleground states, Michigan, Georgia, Wisconsin, and others flip. Let's just allow ourselves to dream for a moment. Trump has then announced the winner. We already know that he is, but he's announced uh, the winner. What happens? I mean, is he, is he credited time lost? 
we're in uncharted territory. Yeah, but, we're yeah. Yeah, we're definitely in yeah. uncharted territory. There are cases where elections have been overturned, but there's never been one at the presidential level, which everybody'll jump to point out. That doesn't mean that it can't be done, though. There's always a first case, and as far as I know, this is the first case of abject fraud and obtaining a coup of the United States of America. So it's going to have to be dealt with. It should be that he can simply be reinstated, that a new inauguration date is set. And Biden is told to move out of the White House. And, <laughs> and, and, and President Trump should be moved back in. I, I'm sure there's not going to be credit for time lost, unfortunately, because the Constitution itself sets the date for inauguration. But he should definitely get the remainder of his term and, and make the best of it, that's for sure. Well, so that, so, okay, for, in my mind, that begs a question. I, I, I want Trump to have four years. I mean, we were ripped off. You, when, yep. when, when something is stolen, you want it back. So I, no remedy for that, you're saying? In, not, not that I can think of under the, under the state of the laws. Unless he runs now. again in 2024. Right, yeah. unless right. he runs again. Right. But if we don't fix this right now, people, there won't be a 2024. Right, right. If we have any rule of law left in this country, he needs to be reinstalled as president this year. Who are, um, and I'm going to ask you to name names, and again, we've not rehearsed this. If, and obviously, she's a, she's a big girl and not going to answer. If she doesn't want to answer, she doesn't have to. Who are the names that are involved in the theft of this election on the, on the as I call them, the commu-socialist side? The um, commie socialist side. There are no more Democrats in my, right. especially in the elected class. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a very large group of people. I don't have what I would call direct evidence of any one or more particular persons being involved other than the usual suspects. I mean, we know that George Soros is funding a lot of the organizations that have been part of the problem. We know that a particular union, uh, the name of which escapes me, was involved in some of the uh, counterfeit ballot transportation. Um, there are a wide number of people involved. Many of them are in the six key cities where the vast majority of the ballot fraud occurred. And then, well, first of all, we have to realize there were, there were multiple means of fraud employed here. There was the algorithm in the machines that shaved right. votes from Trump and gave them to Biden. There were votes that were flipped um, by computer hacking, we believe. We have some evidence of that. There are votes that were changed through the adjudication process that the various election machine companies have built into their software and system. That allows uh, an individual to look at a vote for whatever reason and decide how you intended to vote. Needless to say, that is fraught with problems, particularly when the machine is geared to kick out anything done with a Sharpie that was deliberately used in multiple places. People were given that as the only means to mark their ballot. I think all those we'll find out went into an adjudication file and that's hundreds of thousands of ballots. And then with the one click of the computer, that entire adjudication file can be assigned to Joe Biden. So that was another one of the means of the fraud. They thought the algorithm was going to take care of it. That's what they ran. I'm sure we're going to find that out also in 2016, which is the only reason Hillary won the popular vote. We all know she was not that popular anywhere. <clears throat> but yes, um, that's the only reason that she won the popular vote then was because of the algorithm. This time, they did not plan on the turnout of Trump supporters that turned out. Yeah. 
and the key was that you all turned out on election day. That was the key, and I and others were telling people to do that, to go in person on election day and vote. Thank God you all listened all around the country because it broke the algorithm. That's what made them all stop counting the votes in the wee hours of the morning. That's what triggered the need to bring in the fake ballots and backfill them into the machines. That is what exposed their whole scheme. So thank you all for doing it. And then they thought they could shut us all up. They thought they would be dealing only with election law lawyers and only with traditional election challenges. I don't think they realized that uh, some of us uh, litigators were going to catch on and hold their feet to the fire and expose what really happened or that they could shut us up by, say, suing me for $4.3 billion and <laughs> three different states and things like that. Um, they sent out, I, I don't know how many hundreds of cease and desist letters, even to people who retweeted a tweet about Dominion voting systems. And the effort to shut down any discourse about what happened in this election has been extraordinary and unprecedented and wouldn't have been tolerated in other circumstances. But boy, they have, they have piled it on here. Uh, it doesn't work. Um, threatening me is like waving a red flag in a bull's face. <laughs> <laughs> they also sued our nonprofit, Defending the Republic. Dot org, and so defending the republic is defending itself. I am defending myself, and if the judges don't grant our motions to dismiss on all those cases, because number one, they don't have jurisdiction over us, and number two, uh, we meant what we said and we have the evidence to back it up, they can't prove an essential element of their claim, one or more. So the cases should definitely be dismissed, but if they're not, then we will get discovery against Dominion and we will be on offense. <laughs> and we will just find out even more. So they sh might consider what they asked for. They might be like the St. Bernard that lusted after the Volkswagen. Once they get it, they're not gonna know what to do with it. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our time with Sydney Powell today. Sydney, I can't thank you enough for allowing you, me Doug. to be part of thank this. You. Thank you. Thank Sydney Powell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>